Hi Gemini and welcome to your May monthly prediction reading. This reading is going to be a general prediction only so if you are looking for a love prediction reading I'm going to link it up here and I'll also include it at the end of this reading. Um, that love prediction reading is from the middle of April until the middle of May. So this reading is intended for Gemini Sun Moon Risings or those who have strong Gemini placements in their chart. There's going to be a lot of background interference, y'all. I'm filming outside today and the cockatoos are very chatty. Um, <laughs> we're just going to work through it. If you are not a Gemini and you are just here checking up on a Gemini that you're interested in, you're more than welcome to stay. I just need you to know that I'm a very honest reader. So if you hear or see something you do not like, you have been warned. Now to start your reading off, I'm going to pull a card from my Gem Oracle deck. This will give us the overall theme that you can expect to experience in the month of May for Gemini, please, spirit. What is their overall theme in the month of May? Oh, Gemini. Things are looking up, sweet pea. We have rose quartz coming out for you. So rose quartz in this deck is associated with the air element. It's also connected to the planet Uranus. We have the number 27. We've got the root chakra at the bottom there and we have this stretchy yoga pose. Now I need to learn these yoga poses because <laughs> I just give them my own little nicknames. I feel some interesting themes for you in the month of May, Gemini. I feel with that root chakra, it's all about embracing a, a stable sort of foundation for yourself, but I can't help but feel Uranus pushing you to extend beyond your comfort zone here. I think that some of you are not going to be happy with that push, while others of you, maybe this is instigated. Um, this is your element, air. Rose Quartz is clearly having something to do with this push as well. So it could be something to do with your connections or your love, your empathy um, for somebody else or towards a situation that is pushing you beyond this threshold, beyond this barrier and making you kind of want to try something new and to reinvent yourself. That's what Uranus is all about for me, reinvention, repurposing, um, kind of like thinking in innovative ways, moving in futuristic directions, um, just not really kind of getting bogged down. Although that root chakra energy makes me think that whatever it is that you are creating or however it is that you are moving forward, I believe you want to do so with the idea of it being stable and sort of grounded, like you, like an anchor is what I'm seeing. Um, there's like one foot on the ground, but your head is in the clouds here. So it's an interesting energy for you. That number 27 is also giving me um, sort of messages. I see that number two as partnership and collaboration. So you may be working with someone or you could be having an idea about doing something with someone um, that involves their collaboration, their support, their partnership. Um, that also makes me think of direction, needing to choose between A or B, left or right, for example, um, forward or back, new or old, that kind of energy, directional, especially with the number seven in 27. That makes me think of movement, like the chariot. It makes me think of needing to have courage, needing to have stamina, because you're kind of pushing yourself through the situation. So let's get into the monthly prediction now. We're going to do it week by week, starting with that first week of May spirit which your birthday will be in May as well. So happy birthday, Gemini, if you're experiencing a birthday in May. I'm just going to shuffle this deck. I'm not happy with some of these cards. It was raining this morning while I was filming the earth signs. And some of these cards are not liking that watery energy. So if it's too bad, I'll switch decks. But I think it was just a case of needing to kind of shuffle them get the movement back into the deck. Okay, so what is happening in week one of May for Gemini? I've got two cards, I will take them both. I think for you, I'm gonna to have to be very specific and careful about my messages. So you have the Queen of Pentacles and the Four of Pentacles coming out, both upright, which is very promising. I see in that first week, you're really kind of focusing on that stability, you're focusing on kind of getting your ducks in a row is what it feels like. That Four of Pentacles is sometimes a clingy, needy energy of um, struggling 
willing to kind of let go or feeling like you really need to hold on to something. But I think more than anything, it's you trying to get your ducks in a row, maybe putting money aside, um, sticking to a plan, being a bit frugal, being a bit careful about what you spend, especially with the Queen of Pentacles here. It's like you have a plan. And I think that Queen of Pentacles is telling us that at the end of the day, it's we're doing it for this. You know, we're being a bit frugal for this. So that first week does seem to be really kind of about you sticking to some sort of plan that you've set for yourself. I want to say that someone could be playing a significant role in that first week, could be an earth sign. Um, so we're looking at Taurus Virgo Capricorn, but it's that energy that the Queen of Pentacles brings in that first week, which is one of sentimental value a nurturing energy of um, almost like family and also just wanting to stick to what you know, if that makes sense. I really feel you just kind of in a routine here in the first week. It's interesting. Um, maybe you're just working on your health even, some of you. But I don't think so. This feels very much like a, a budget, like you need to be careful. You need to cut back here in order to save there. And it's all for this and it's all for that. And yeah, it feels very careful, practical and like responsible, <laughs> like a typical earth sign when they're trying to work towards a goal. All right. What is your challenge in the first week, Gemini? What is Gemini's main challenge in the first week? Gemini's main challenge in the first week. We have the page of wands in the reverse position. So as a challenge, this is looking like impulsive actions, okay? Doing something without thinking. So your main challenge here in the first week has to do with kind of your impulsive thoughts, your impulsive actions, um, especially if you're wanting to stick to a, a plan or a budget. I see you just kind of having that desire to go crazy and to just spend $200 on makeup. <laughs> it may not be makeup, but it's that feeling of like getting carried away in the moment with the page of wands. And we know better. That's why the card's reversed. It's not something that... Um, we have to do. It's a situation that's easily avoided. Our experience tells us that this is not a wise thing to do. It's quite naive. Um, I, the other thing that the page of Wands Reversed is saying is that you're not thinking big enough because that card is quite ambitious and in the reverse position it's very stunted. I always think of the Page of Wands as someone who's about to embark on a new journey of experience and really getting out there and, and opening themselves up to new energy. And when it's reversed it feels like we're stunted there. So a challenge here may be allowing kind of little things to come in so that we don't accidentally bend and break and end up, you know, it's like that idea of um, restriction and prohibition and people, you know, too much of anything is bad for you. But when you kind of say you can't have it, it makes you want it more. Um, so consider that as well as your main challenge in the first week. Let's get some advice for that week one for Gemini spirit. What is the advice for Gemini in week one? In week one, we have two cards and they were both kind of talking about what I was saying. We have the crone, which is the number 13, and we have the stone, which is the number 67. I had to think about that. Um, 67. So the crone is really encouraging you to think, to be wise, to use your experience, to help you get through your challenges, to plan ahead, to trust your gut instinct as well. That's the thing about the crone. It's a very wise and mature energy and it's very gutturally, yeah, throat chakra sort of gut instinct energy. Um, that stone though is almost asking for you to be stubborn and kind of solid and just sit in your practical intentions. So whatever you're putting your mind to in week one, I see you accomplishing it, Gemini. I just see that you got to kind of be stubborn about it, really stick to it, be like the stone in the middle of a river, you know, let the water pass around you, let the chaos move around you and don't let it sway you. Even if it nudges you along the stream a little bit, don't let it sway you too much. Let's move on to week two, Gemini. What can Gemini expect in week two? I'm getting a lot 
of interference in terms of messages. So I do sense that this Uranus could be talking about friends as well, maybe getting more social in the month of May or making some important com um, conversations in the month of May. What's happening in the second week for Gemini spirit? I, what's going on here? What's happening in the second week for Gemini? There we go. Again, two cards. Spirit really wants to come through for y'all. We have the Blasted Tower reversed and we have the Two of Pentacles. So I see a preventable situation happening here. I see something going down in week two. That mm, bit of a red flag moment. We saw this coming with the Blasted Tower reversed. The chaos of the true situation has already happened, but it's coming back in week two because we haven't addressed it properly. Um, I talked about this in another sign, but the main reason that this is happening is because the catastrophic, sudden, unexpected event has already happened. But instead of cleaning it up properly and building our new foundations with stability, we may have either created weak foundations or we haven't given that situation enough appropriate time to clean up and to restart appropriately. I think that this is entirely preventable. I think that you're experiencing something in week two that you've already been through before. And I think that it's not as drastic this time, but it's certainly still triggering because it still resembles a chaotic situation that you've previously overcome. This is connected to your lifestyle, to your physical situation, to your money. Um, I don't see this happening in a relationship sense with the two of pentacles coming out. I see this either being related to your career or being related to your daily routine, your lifestyle. Um, the reason why this is happening is because we need to really fix that area of our life up because it seems to be spinning out of control. We need to create more stability in our finances, in our career, um, and we need to kind of be more practical about how we spend our time on a daily basis. I think that you need to give yourself more outlets. I see you just kind of getting stuck in the cycle here and we need to do something new. And week two in May is the week to address those issues with your scheduling, your time management, and how you manage your um, money. And what I'm talking about with money here with the Two of Pentacles is like a, a weekly budget or a weekly shop or a, a, even a long-term goal. But I would see the Two of Pentacles as more of like a practical daily thing at the most a weekly thing. So this is coming up again because it's kind of, it, it needs to be addressed now. It's getting a bit catastrophic here. And we need to put like a more stable system in place to support our goal. Um, what is the main challenge here in week two for Gemini? What is the main challenge here in week two? I'm only going to take the top one because it's basically confirming the overall energy. We have the two of pentacles again as your challenge. This goat, this Capricorn, it could be that you're stuck in the same routine and it's time to try something new. I just feel like balance here with your daily life getting more energy in um and i just think that you know you've got the rose quartz as your overall energy this innovative forward thinking compassionate desiring sort of stability energy and then your actions are so repetitive and a bit mundane like it just seems to be the same thing a different day here so the challenge here is to bring about harmonious change and to balance out your material world what is the advice for gemini in week two you got a lot of card suites we have the orphan coming out for you. So this is the number five. I'm going to give you key dates at the end of your reading, but I see with the number five that the goal in your in your second week is really to change, to make changes, to grow, and to kind of make changes to help you feel less alone, if that makes sense. Because I see this orphan being an energy of feeling without, feeling like you're missing out on something, feeling like you don't have enough of something, feeling like you're not getting enough, whether that's connection, whether that's time moments in the sun, you know, just feeling like you're missing out. So your advice here is to not let that feeling get the best of you and to do something about it basically in the second week of May. We'll move forward to the third week now. What is happening in the third week of May for Gemini spirit? 
we have the universe. A lot of major arcana under this card. We also had the hermit and the empress. The universe is ruled by Saturn. So you've got a very practical earthy energy about you this whole month so far. And I think that it's helpful in terms of hustling and doing what needs to be done. But I also think that it's putting an immense amount of stress and pressure on you. And it's maybe making your mind wonder um, in ways that aren't exactly helpful because on one hand I see you are thinking so much about the future but on the other hand your energy is so invested in kind of just this grind and this hustle so you're not really syncing up is what I mean and it could be a case of escapism through thoughts but it just feels like again foot on the ground head in the clouds like I felt in the beginning the third week of May I see you as really trying to focus on finishing something doing something for the sake of like getting it done this could be about finalizing something to do with work to do with study the universe is very much a celebratory energy of like look at me look what I can do look what my hard work has done feeling proud of yourself here in week three because of what you've been able to do for yourself for some of you I sense a nail in the coffin moment here in week three where you've once and for all agreed or, or decided that you this is the end of the road and from here on you know this is what you're going to be doing for yourself um, it's kind of like you're saying goodbye and you're welcoming a new chapter here in week three what is the challenge for Gemini in week three the challenge here is, again, the world. They're giving me the world with the Ace of Pentacles. So the challenge is saying goodbye, wrapping things up, tying up your loose ends, and getting ready for this new beginning. I see success here with the Ace of Pentacles. I see a long-term stable option for you. I see that it is very much about how much you're willing to invest with the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles is like a seed. Um, you're given the seed, but you're the one that has to water it. You're the one that has to fertilize it, cultivate it until you can harvest it essentially. So amazing long-term opportunity here. Your challenge is to tie up the loose ends, really get the ball rolling in that third week, which is like maybe your birthday week for some of you and um, welcome this new opportunity in. So what is the advice in the third week of May for Gemini? What is the advice in the third week of May for Gemini? We have the mystic coming out. So you're actually being encouraged to try not to stress about the things that you don't yet understand, but to ultimately trust your gut instinct and to trust what you envision yourself doing in the future. I feel like your mind's eye has its eye on the prize in terms of where you want to be next, what this new opportunity will look like for you and how you want it to shape itself um, in your future. So stay attached to that vision and try not to worry too much. I know it's easier said than done about what you cannot see with the mystic here. You're really being encouraged to con um, stay connected to that gut instinct though, to what you feel within your gut instinct, which is connected to your throat chakra. W what you feel is best for you in that third week and make decisions accordingly. So third week will transition into the fourth week now Gemini what is happening for Gemini in the fourth week of May those cicadas just got really loud we have the princess of wands for you again in the reverse position this is basically the page of wands um, in this deck wow more fiery energy we had you over here on the first week <clears throat> with the page of wands reversed now we've got you at the last week here so like I mentioned before, the Page of Wands is a frustrating energy, feeling like you can't kind of take that leap or that journey or embrace new energy. So this is this is a feeling of feeling frustrated um, in your fourth week here, maybe a bit frazzled. I think that you're in out of your head here, like in the sense of you're experiencing something that you haven't experienced before and it's making you feel anxious about how well you can deal with this pressure, how well you can cope with this new um, situation. So let's get, have a look at your challenge and then we'll get advice. What's happening in the fourth week of May <clears throat> for Gemini? What's happening in the fourth week of May for Gemini spirit?
Okay, we have strength in the reverse. So a big challenge here in that fourth week has to do with courage. Having the courage, having the patience, also just having the compassion towards yourself to adjust to this new situation that you're dealing with. I think you need to follow through with your actions here because we know in the third week you're experiencing a new cycle. You're going through um, an ending and it's culminating and it's tying. you're tying up loose ends. You need to kind of see it through in the fourth week and commit to the road at hand or the, the task at hand, I want to say, but it feels like a journey for you. It feels like you're pivoting in a new direction. What is the advice here in the fourth week of May for Gemini? Mm, keep your eye on the prize. I saw the medallion. Keep your eye on the prize, Gemini, in that fourth week. Don't get disheartened. Just because your environment appears to be lacking, just because it feels like you're in this desert and that you're not going anywhere, don't lose sight of your overall goal here. Keep your eye on the prize in that fourth week of May. I feel like the desert is also encouraging you to be very aware of the situation that you're in you know making the most out of the situation that you're in you're in a desert if you're still alive <laughs> that's a pretty big you know that's a pretty big um deal you're in a new situation if you're still alive that's a pretty big deal is what spirit is hinting at you can't necessarily control everything here so making the most out of the situation is what i feel the advice is Get, taking the best out of the situation you can only do the best that you can with what you've got at any given time is what that message is so gemini that is what i'm seeing for you for the month of may i hope that was helpful i hope the advice is something that you can come back to throughout the month you may have messages messages in other aspects of your chart, your sun, moon, rising, for example. I hope you have a prosperous and wonderful month of May, and I shall see you in another video. Bye!